So, just keep on trekking along with the Romantic Era. The next person we're going to talk about is Piotr Tchaikovsky. Piotr Tchaikovsky was a Russian composer born in May of 1840 and died November of 1893. Um, again, not many composers lived to be very long. He lived to be 53, which is pretty good. Um, lived in Russia. So he initially went to school to become a public servant um, since studying music wasn't very much of an option um, as a career in Russia at the time. Um, and when the opportunity to study music became an option, he went and studied at the St. Petersburg Conservatory, where he later graduated in 1865. St. Petersburg is one of the largest cities in Russia, and it's where a lot of the arts, politicians, all like their movie, everything is kind of based in St. Petersburg. A lot of the big churches that run the whole country are in St. Petersburg. So it's kind of a hot spot for a lot of different things. And when you get to go study music at one of the greatest conservator conservatories in your country, you gotta go. Um, so he's most famous for his ability to combine both Western and Russian stylings into his composition. This wasn't done before. Uh, Russian composers are very nationalistic and they, they like the way that Russians write music. And so they don't like incorporating things from the West um, and vice versa. People from the West had no idea how Russian music worked because they it's kind of secretive on how they write it and all the folk stories and all that stuff. And so he kind of incorporated these two worlds together. And the reason why we know so much about both of these worlds now is largely due to him, him just kind of breaking these barriers down. So Russian music is very different to Western music in the way that they uh, thought about melody and harmony. They use a lot of really weird chords. They don't use the same scales that we do. Um, and a lot of it is what's called like atonal, meaning it doesn't have a single set hitch for their tone or key, which is not important. Um, so although he combined these styles, his stylings of his compositions were still very Russian. There's definitely a large Russian influence in what he's doing because that's the country that he hails from. But he was just, he was experimental with how he started to do these things, which is really important because then it sets the stage for everybody to come after him to kind of steal from this and borrow. Um, so even though much of his music today is still very popular, um, while he was alive, however, many of the other Russian composers did not like the way that he wrote music because it was not nationalistic enough. Remember how I said that, you know, Russians don't really like Western music and they were super all about Mother Russia? Yeah, all the other Russian composers hated him because he kind of broke away from the norm and he was he was pretty much shunned from that entire community and he eventually left Russia and lived in America for a while um, and he lived out the rest of his life in America and uh, yeah just really sad that he got rejected by his own nationality and his own people because of his artistic beliefs um, he's one of the greatest composers to come out of the Romantic era, uh, with many of his works still being widely popular today. Um, some of his, a lot of these pieces are absolutely beautiful, but really cool. So the 1812 overture, that one, the dun da 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 dun da 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 dun da 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 da. That was this guy. Also, the cool thing about the 1812 overture is at the very very end it calls for actual cannon fire and so in some performances they'll get real cannons to shoot off blanks I, i've seen some videos it's pretty cool uh the romeo and juliet's uh it's it was an opera if you've ever heard any like cliche you know like love music the da -na, da -na 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 -na. Uh, i'm not singing it terribly he wrote that Romeo and Juliet suite that then became like the trope for any romantic music. Like not romantic as in romantic style, but as romantic love. He kind of started that with the Rom Romeo and Juliet. He wrote the Nutcracker suite. Um, this is probably one of the most recognizable piece of romantic era works because they remake it every couple of years under a new film, new movie, new play, new musical something this the nutcracker has been done so many times that it's crazy it's absolutely crazy no other classical piece of music has ever been redone that much he also did uh sleep the sleeping beauty and swan lake both very recognizable pieces i guarantee that most of you have heard these first three though in movie tv something but yeah that's piotr